Like any machine, a printers require regular maintenance to keep them working well and lasting as long as possible. Today I'm going to show you how to clean this Epson R3000 printer. All the printers that we're going to show you how to clean have the same parts, like a print head, the capping station, and the wiper blade. The capping station and the wiper blade should be cleaned every few weeks, and the bottom of the print head should be cleaned as needed if you have um, stubborn misfiring nozzles or clogged nozzles or smears on the paper. To access the cleaning area of the R3000 printer, I'm going to turn it on and then unplug it from the back once the print head is moved out of the lock position. All right. So now I can manually move the print head out of the way and see the cleaning area right over here on the right. So over here is the cleaning area. These two pads are spring-loaded and those are the capping stations. It's a porous pad with a raised rubber rim around and that seals on the bottom of the print head to keep it from drying out. That's also where the print head sprays ink when you do a cleaning cycle so it gets really gunky. Um, right here, folded down, is the wiper blade, and I will fold it up so you can see right here. So when the print head does um, a cleaning cycle and sprays ink, it, the wiper blade folds up and it, the print head moves and wipes the bottom of the print head. Because of the limited visibility, I've removed the cover from this printer so that you can easily see this area that I'm working on, but it's not necessary for you to do at home when cleaning your printer. This is an Epson 3880 printer, which is identical to a 3800 and very similar to an R3000. Um, the difference is that an R3000 wiper blade tucks down here, whereas the 3800-3880 slides in the back. So this, again, is the capping station. It's spring-loaded with porous pads and a raised rubber rim. That's where ink is sprayed when the printer does a cleaning cycle, and so it gets really gunky. Um, the wiper blade moves forward to wipe off the bottom of the print head, so that also gets really gunky, and those parts are important to clean in order to keep the print head clean and in good working condition. So I'll show you how to clean those parts now. So I'm going to clean the capping station first I'm using Piezo Flush Solution, a syringe with a blunt tip needle so I can get right where I want. So remove the plug from the bottle and dip the needle into the bottle and draw piezo flush out and then put that aside. So I want to deposit piezo flush on the capping station. I don't want it to overflow, but I want it to get moist. And note the rim around will keep it from overflowing. And now I'm taking a bounty paper towel which is recommended because it's strong and it doesn't have a lot of fibers that will fall off. So I take a half sheet of Bounty paper towel and fold it. And now what I'm going to do is use my two fingers to push down on the capping stations and allowing um, the piezo flush to absorb. And so it's the piezo flush is breaking down any waste ink and paper fiber gunk and then I'm just taking it out of the pads here. So it'll never get totally clean, it'll, the cap will never get white, but you can definitely get a lot of gunk out. It's important to be able to see the metal screen here on the top of the cap. If that is covered with waste ink gunk, then there will be no flow of ink um, and it will get transferred to the bottom of the print head, it will cause clogging and smearing on your prints. Next I'm going to clean the wiper blade. In this printer model it slides back. I'm going to use a little scrubby pad and moisten it with a little bit of piezo flush. And the side of the capping or the wiper blade that is close to the capping station is the side that 
wipes the print head. So that's the most important. So I'm going to gently wipe using both sides of the wiper pad. And then I'm going to actually blot all the gunk out. And I'm going to do it again. So I want to make sure um, the wiper blade is straight. There should be a slight curve to the top that's facing towards the capping station. Um, and so if the wiper blade is bent or warped at all, it's not going to have a good contact with the bottom of the head and it's not going to be effective. So this whole cleaning area, the cap pump assembly, should be replaced every few years because it wears out. It's a little difficult to see, so I'm going to pass the tip of this over the wiper blade for you to see. Now I'm going to demonstrate cleaning the bottom of the print head. Again, I'm taking a half sheet of bounty paper towel. I'm going to use the smooth side. I'm going to fold it in half twice. So it's about an inch. And that fits nicely right in the, the channel here. So I'm going to moisten the paper towel. I don't want it to be dripping wet, but I'm going to moisten it with Piezo Flush. Just like that. And I want it to be kind of flat. I'm going to lay it down right here in this channel. This is where the print head moves back and forth. I'm going to push it down, especially this side because I'm going to slide the print head over and I don't want it to get caught up. So when the paper towel is in position, I slide the print head over. See it slid over nicely. If it doesn't slide over, if it starts to get jammed, don't force it. Put it back, flatten it down, and try again. So the print head over the moist paper towel, I'm going to lift up on the two sides and I'm gently wiping back and forth like shining a shoe. And now I'm going to put it down and slide the print head off the paper towel. And so this gunk has come off the bottom of the print head. You want to make sure that the paper towel is whole and you haven't ripped off a chunk um, that might be lodged under the print head. Pro model printers such as the 3800, 3880, and R3000 any printers that have cartridges and ink lines that lead to the print head have dampers, which are inline ink filters in between the, the ink lines and the print head, which is under here. Um, the dampers have a really fine screen that catch particles to protect the print head, and the dampers should be replaced about once a year as recommended by Epson, but people usually don't do this until they have major problems. So with this printer model, the dampers are not replaced individually, but the whole ink unit is replaced with the cartridge chambers, the ink lines, and the whole damper assembly. It costs about $175 from Compass Micro. This is the auto paper feed area of the 3800 printer. Notice this area right here, this is the part that actually grabs the sheet of paper and it gets really dusty, especially if you're using fine art paper. Um, and so if it gets dusty, it's not going to grab onto the sheet and it's going to slip and you'll have paper feed errors. So um, this is really good to wipe off and I actually just use my finger to clean it off. Also I use canned air or a really uh, small nozzle vacuum to clean the dust out of this area. And so you want to make sure that this is lint-free so that you have good paper feed. When storing your cartridges out of the printer, make sure to plug both the air vent hole and the fill hole to prevent evaporation. I'm going to install this set of Piezo Flush filled cartridges into the R3000 printer and run an initial fill cycle using the adjustment program to flush all of the internal ink lines for safe storage. Just open up the cartridge bay and I'm going to snap each cartridge in place. Before running the adjustment program, I'm going to remove 
all the air vent plugs from the cartridges and so that fluid can flow out of the carts. If you don't remove the air vent plugs, then nothing will flow from the cartridge and nothing will print on the nozzle check. So it's very important. So on this cartridge model, this is the air vent hole and this is the fill hole. It's very important that the plug is removed and the air vent hole is open to allow ink flow from the cartridge before use.